uh, was uh, introduced last week on Thursday. So uh, our discussion is open and uh, is anybody uh, want to make, I think Mr. McKinney said he would like to make some comments since he was not here at our last meeting. And I'll pass the mic over to you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, let me uh, note that I wish I, I had been here for our last meeting. I was actually on a flight to California. I won't say that I was studying the Pacific shoreline while I was out there, uh, but I did look it over. Uh, generally, though, I, I thought that I had uh, made known my concerns and brought out the issues that I thought were appropriate for, uh, for discussion. And so uh, uh, I watched the March 3rd video. Um, you all looked pretty good. Uh, and I simply want to make my position known because I've had a number of people ask me about it, so uh, put it on the record. I am keeping in mind, as I have throughout this, uh, but especially in light of some of the, uh, I'd say, overblown buzz that I've, I've heard about what we're doing, I'm keeping in mind we are not decreeing anything. We are a commission. We've studied this issue, and I think in, in some considerable depth we'll make our recommendations to the House uh, and thereafter, the House, the Senate, the Governor uh, will all consider it. Uh, have we accomplished anything? Yes, I, I believe we have. Um, I know I, I tried to bring an open mind to this process. I considered the, the possibility, quite frankly, that the Supreme Court's decision back in 1982 in Ibison uh, might still be the right approach. But after listening to the testimony, uh, and seeing all of the evidence that was provided to us, I changed my view. Uh, I am satisfied that the consensus with the, uh, that the seaweed uh, line should be the point of focus is correct. Uh, now from that seaweed line, of course, the commission has added a 10-foot area where beachgoers can enjoy the privileges of the shore uh, without fear of prosecution. Based on the evidence, based on the historical precedent, it's clear to me that there has traditionally been uh, a common law right to an area, some area, landward of the seaweed line for purposes of public access and privileges of the shore. Uh, and for the reasons I've noted previously, uh, my preference was to avoid setting a specific uh, numerical boundary, a number of feet, uh, for concern that it could lead to difficulties in upholding the changes that, that we're looking to make. Uh, and I also felt that 10 feet was perhaps a little more than was warranted. Uh, I agreed with uh, Judge Flaherty and uh, Mr. Boyer uh, in that regard that perhaps something in the four to six range would be uh, more appropriate. But I have to acknowledge that a, uh, an area of about 10-foot width has uh, what I guess I'll call ox cart precedent, and, uh, and this is a recommendation. So I am joining that consensus. Uh, it, it still seems to me uh, that the primary question that we've been asked to answer is really what is the shore? We lack a clear definition. Uh, the Supreme Court had weighed in, but I don't believe had a monopoly on that subject. I have great respect for the court, but Ibison, in my view, was a mistake. Uh, there's nothing sacrosanct about the mean high water, that MHW line. Uh, it is really simply a boundary that the court chose back in 1982, relying on a, a Los Angeles case that really had very, very different circumstances than we have here in Rhode Island, Inner Harbor, uh, with no wave uh, or wind action uh, affecting it. So hardly the same as Rhode Island coastal beaches. Uh, the court noted at the time that they were coming up with a definition in the absence of one having been set by the General Assembly. Uh, and so the legislature now is taking action to fill that gap, and, and I think it's entirely appropriate that the representative, representatives of the people determine what is meant by, by the shore. Uh, historically in Rhode Island, uh, People have had the right to access the shore. Uh, they weren't restricted to an area that happened to be below the MHW line. Uh, and in fact, no person using the shore back in the day 
would have had the ability to determine what that MHW line was. Uh, finding it, we've been told by any number of witnesses, requires modern specialized equipment and scientific abilities and tools. So using that line, in my view, has had a chilling effect. Oddly enough, it's had a chilling effect on such things as prosecutions. Uh, it's tougher, as we've been told, to show criminal intent where uh, no one knows quite where the line of trespass is. But more concerning to me is the chilling effect that it has on Rhode Island citizens who are looking to access the shore and, and, and engage in their constitutionally protected rights. Uh, they don't want confrontations. And I think when we look at tourism and the importance of that industry to the state of Rhode Island, uh, we all suffer if tourists feel uh, they shouldn't come to Rhode Island because they're not quite sure what will happen to them if they go out on the shoreline. Uh, I've actually come to accept Professor Nixon's view as well, that given the historical evidence of custom and usage, of common law, that what we're proposing is not a taking, it is in the nature of a restoration, restoring to the people of Rhode Island rights that they have had all along. I am glad that some of the recommendations address other issues that were raised. Homeowners are concerned uh, about folks not only enjoying the shore, but perhaps looking to go beyond it and up onto their seawalls or riprap or uh, lawns or patios. Uh, I've caught a bit of flack, uh, I know, uh, with respect to suggesting that we might also consider what people do as well as where they do it. I raised those talking points because uh, people had asked me about them and because I thought they were worthy of some discussion. Uh, other commission members I know have raised those as, as well, but I'm satisfied that those are primarily local considerations and can be uh, uh, dealt with elsewhere. And I recognize too that they're not a part of the specific charge that was given to this commission. I would only emphasize the importance once again of education uh, of people on both sides of the line with respect to their, uh, their respective rights. Um, it also strikes me that regardless of uh, our views, we are likely looking at some litigation down the road. So I'm sure the General Assembly will further consider and assess uh, the remaining issues, the potential for financial exposure by the state. Um, I do think Article 16 of the Rhode Island Constitution gives strong protection under state law. Uh, what concerns me is how a federal court might rule. Um, especially given concisions, decisions that have been rendered uh, in the past year by a very conservative U.S. Supreme Court. Uh, but despite that, I'm struck by the fact that many states have provisions that uh, are similar to what we're proposing, and in fact, many of them actually grant greater access. So abutting landowners in those states uh, have made the same complaints but appear to have had very limited success in, in gaining any compensation for uh, takings. All in all, I, I want to commend uh, the Commission for the impressive amount of time and effort that has been put in. I give credit to Chair Cortfriend and Vice Chair Filippi and the staff. The draft report, in my view, is very well written. Kudos to Mike Hogan uh, and, and anyone else who uh, uh, helped out in the authorship. You know, this has been a difficult problem for many, many years, and the search for a solution, I think, has continued for an awfully long time. Uh, I, I believe we've brought some clarity here uh, by our focus on a definition of the shore that can be readily apparent to a casual observer. Uh, everyone, in my view, who has had a part of this effort deserves uh, uh, a great deal of appreciation from citizens of Rhode Island. Thank you. Well, thank you. That pretty much <laughs> sums up our whole, <laughs> the last eight months. <laughs> I appreciate it. Um, and welcome to... Uh,